On February 28th, 2020, I uploaded the first ever video to this channel, which at the time of recording this is exactly one year ago today. Now I've been skateboarding for much longer than a year, but it wasn't until early 2020 that I really decided to get back into it. The first video I released wasn't particularly anything to be proud of, but it definitely satiated and also fueled a desire that I'd had for a very long time. You see, I've always enjoyed making videos and I actually had a channel with the same name as this one back in the early 2000s. Sadly, that channel is now extinct and alongside it seemingly went my passion for filmmaking. However, it would seem that this passion merely lay dormant because in the second decade of the second millennium, I began to feel a slight itch emerge. That itch was of course the desire to begin making videos again, and it proved to be a fairly difficult itch to scratch because it didn't quite have a sustainable concept of what kind of videos I wanted to make. I created a few weird and random projects here and there, but nothing really stuck. Hello and welcome to the Nerdish Newly Shush, this is your host, Shush. As you know, today is the day that, 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 that I have a very nice guest. As you can see, see you guest. That is until early 2020. Whoa, look at that nice narrative loop. And all of that was just a really long-winded and unnecessary backstory as to what this video is about, which is what I've learned with one year's experience skateboarding, filmmaking, creating, and a bit about publishing on this specific platform. But first, a word from our sponsor. Just kidding. Here's a short ramp session I had on February 27th, 2011. Almost exactly 10 years ago. Oh, to be young and fearless again. Pretty much all of the videos I made back then were of this similar format. I would just go out and skate and then put the tricks to some music and upload it as ramp sesh or rail sesh or skate park clips and then call it a day. And it's no wonder that these videos didn't get very many views because just about anybody can have a ramp sesh or a rail sesh and put it up on the internet. But unless you're a fairly renowned skateboarder, you're not gonna generate much attention from it. One thing that's very important to learn early on is if you're not famous or at least semi-famous, nobody really cares about what you do. It sounds harsh, but it's the truth. This is a problem I see with a lot of YouTubers just starting out. They fail to appeal to a larger audience other than their group of friends because they don't give anybody else a reason to care about their videos. There are millions and millions of skateboarders in the world and thousands of them on YouTube, nipping at the heels of John Hill and Dale Decker. But if you look at their most popular videos, they generate intrigue among a very large group of individuals. So developing a plot or some kind of premise for your videos will likely help them to do better in general. These videos may not be fun to make and may seem like clickbait, which sometimes they are, but this is just one of the barriers of entry to garnering more of a mainstream following, which is why you're making YouTube videos in the first place, right? I've already known that I like skateboarding. That's not new information, but doing the whole YouTube skater thing has rekindled my passion for it more than anything else. Skateboarding and filmmaking have gone hand in hand since the inception of the activity, and I think all skaters should film themselves, but that's something I'm gonna talk about in a future video. Skating and filming and editing and creating and uploading 
is all such a very satisfying process and I wish to do as much of it as I possibly can. And as a result, my skateboarding has improved a fair amount over the last year. I'm much more meticulous and intentional with my skating nowadays, and that has caused me to learn quite a few new tricks and just get as good as I possibly can. Not just for my own personal satisfaction, but also for the general interest of those who care to view my videos. Lately, it's rare that I skate and don't end up filming myself. It's definitely a lot freer of a session if I don't pull out the camera, but I always anticipate getting FOMO if I work on or land a new or personally impressive trick. I enjoy filmmaking as much as I enjoy skateboarding, and the fact that I can do both at the same time is just fantastic. There's a saying that goes, life begins at the end of your comfort zone. Over the last year, I've visited and seen and tried and done many things that I probably wouldn't have otherwise. I've never really considered myself much of an outgoing person, but putting myself in front of a camera and then out onto the internet has really forced me to embrace that side of me. Talking to an inanimate object such as a camera whilst out in public could certainly feel awkward and at sometimes a bit self-absorbed or narcissistic. But once you get over that initial discomfort, it can actually begin to feel pretty freeing. And at a certain point, the proof is in the pudding. If I receive weird looks or criticism about vlogging in public places, I don't really care anymore because I'm confident in my content and I know that I'm making a quality product. In the last year, I've noticed myself less and less concerned with the opinions of others. Some people may think I'm wacky or foolish or eccentric for taking part in this whole YouTube rat race, and maybe I am. But my life has just begun because I'm making myself uncomfortable. The last year has been undeniably unique, to put it lightly. But of all the unusual and unfortunate things that happened, some good has come of it. I've rediscovered a past passion for filmmaking and skateboarding, and I couldn't be happier to have done so. Whether or not this whole YouTube thing becomes fruitful at one point or another, I don't see myself stopping anytime soon. Because if I didn't make skateboarding and shenanigans videos anymore, I honestly wouldn't know what to do with my free time. So make sure you hit that like and subscribe and the notification bell and stay tuned to Spooty Skater because I'm going to be around for a little while longer, whether you like it or not. You don't want to come across as too monotone or lifeless when you're on the YouTube. You got to be really eccentric. You'd be like, what's up guys? Welcome to another video. I'm so excited that you're here. We're going to have so much fun and then we're going to die.